My guest today is back in the boots that earned him his second Tony Award nomination, playing Charlie Price in the musical smash Kinky Boots. Find out why Stark Sands took a break from Broadway in the first place, how the current state of the world got him back, and the delightfully creative way he and his family take the piss out of Christmas every year on this episode of Show People. Mr. Stark Sands, back on the Broadway. Yes, sir. Good to see you. It's good to be back. What the hell are you doing back? When I left the show. It was Kinky the, Boots. Yes. Back, you're back in the boots. Back, back in, the, in boots. the boots of Kinky Boots. When my year on Broadway came to an end and my contract came to an end, my wife and I were really focused on starting a family. An eight show week schedule is not conducive to doing that. Right. And you made one. So we did. Thank you. Beautiful we have a little two year old boy. Yes, it's the best. But coming back, the genesis was Billy and I always talked about coming back together someday. And it was a real thing, but it, you know, who knows if it was going to happen. And last year when uh, all of the election stuff was going, going down and the campaigns and the ugliness and the sort of anger and the hate, um, when the result came through and it was, felt like a very dark time, certainly in New York City, um, I called Billy. He was one of the first people I talked to and we, we sort of made it more of a priority to actually do it and come back soon. So I later, two weeks later, ran into Daryl Roth. I was doing a reading of a new musical that's still in its infancy, and she was producing it, and I pitched the idea about us coming back together, and her eyes lit up, and then Her and Hal showed up, and she told Hal Luftig, and both of them were like, oh. And the conversation started, and now we're back. I so love it. We just both felt like we wanted to be fighting for the forces of light Mm -hmm. and um, in a dark time. And more than any show I've ever been a part of, any project I've been a part of, this show embodies that sort of a, a positive message of hope and understanding and love. And now it's real. So does it, so now that you and Mr. Billy Porter, Tony Ward winner Billy Porter, are back, does it feel good to have it in your oh life again? Gosh. Does it, how, how are you feeling? It hasn't changed at all. It, I mean, it feels great. I feel like I'm doing my part. You know, and I've done what I can in the interim to try to, you know, make the, the donations that count and, and to make phone calls and try to help be a, a force for change. And I'm still doing that stuff, but now I can see it happening in the audience. You can feel it. It's, it's tactile. So it feels great. So isn't it crazy that the show has become this? I mean, you know, you, you get involved in a new musical and, you know, you hope that it'll run through your contract, yeah. you hope it might do well at the Tony Awards, right. you hope that these things will happen, and Kiki was sort of like, everything happened, everything you just happened. check off all the boxes. Every single thing. And I didn't know what to think. When we first did our first, uh, the reading that I was first a part of, which was in January of 2012, mm -hmm. I knew that it felt really good, and I knew that it was something special, but I didn't know if it would connect with an audience, because you can't know that until you're in front of one. Right. And to be honest with you, I really thought that they needed to change the title. I thought, the title's going to put people off, mm -hmm. the word kinky has a connotation of, like, it's a sexual connotation, yeah. it has nothing to do with this show, and I was so wrong. Because what ended up happening was people were coming to see something that they were expecting to be kind of like fun and a little flirty and like kind of frivolous, and it hits you in the gut mm -hmm. with this emotional story that, that universally people connect to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it really was uh, absolute bucket list stuff across the board. And what's it like to be back in those moments with Billy on stage? I mean, you guys have great <sighs> moments together, great chemistry. You, you sort of created this thing that now other actors have carried on and yeah. it's, it's, be, you know, it's sort of grown past you two, but what's it like to be back in there with him? It feels really, really, really good. And selfishly, that was part of the reason why I, I sort of insisted that, Bill, that we do it together. I left the show first. I was the first principal mm -hmm. to leave. And so I only ever did it with Billy. And then, you know, understudies and covers whenever he was out. But coming back to the show as special as it would be without him, it just it wouldn't be the same. When, when you take a show through readings and out of town and you're living in another city, we were in Chicago, and, and, and you're having like rehearsal time and you, you get to yeah. really bond. And that's something you can't fabricate with with someone, I, I mean, I, I, maybe there is a way to do it, but I don't have the time in my life to do that now. I, my time is I am with my family, and then I go to work and do the sh do the show, and then I go back home. Mm -hmm. So, it's really special, and it still is new. It still manages to be new every night, and it's early days, but like, it's it's a really good feeling to be on stage with him again. Do you miss sort of the the roar of the audience, and w as an actor, when you sort of remove yourself from that for a while? Yeah. I mean, it must just be like such a huge ego, but what's it like to be back in front of that? It's awesome. It's awesome, yeah. I'll be honest. 
So your ego's like super high right now. I always feel extra confident and just in my day-to-day -day life when I am doing a Broadway show or a theater experience uh -huh. where there is a, po you get this positive affirmation every night from an audience. And not every show has that, but this one certainly does. Right. And so even on a show when I'm like, if I feel like I didn't hit it or I have to do some alt notes like because my voice is tired and I don't really get to pop up to that, you know, that high A or whatever, I walk out the stage door feeling like, oh man, I could have done better. And the people that are waiting out there to find, sign autographs tell me that you were amazing, oh my God, I can't believe how, and it makes me go, oh, okay, gosh, I'm, I'm too hard on myself. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's a good feeling. I mean, and a lot of people would like to be, walk out of their job. I'm sure people, office people, oh would love gosh. to walk out of their job and have people waiting to tell them they did a great job that day. It's the best, <laughs> it's, it really is. And I don't know, there, there are other, I've been very lucky in my career to work in film, television, and, you know, and, and, and a lot of things. You don't get that when you're working in TV or in right. movies. I mean, even on a, like a you know a multi-camera sitcom with a live audience, it's not the same. Right. It's still like stop, start, stop, start, and it, it, it isn't. There's nothing like this. So rehearsals. You're you're together with Billy, yeah. and it's time to do it. Were you guys were just like letter perfect? Have you been rehearsing it at home? Were you? Yeah. Well, uh, when we knew this this was real, we were fortunate enough to come in and and do a. Uh, theater development fund benefit in February. We knew it was happening. The cast didn't know. Just us and the producers and Jerry. Okay. And I pulled Jerry aside and I was like, "What? How many? How much rehearsal do you think we're gonna get?" And he was like, "Oh, three days, three days." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, yeah." <laughs> but he wasn't kidding. And so the the rehearsal process, when I knew it really was three days, I pulled out my book and you know, and, and, and I started working on my lines. And obviously, I'm, the music is all there. Like I didn't have to really. Right. Other than like vocally getting my voice back to to singing shape, but the weekend before we started, Billy texted me and he's like, "Girl, you know your lines." And I, I was going to ask you for a Billy Porter impersonation. <laughs> I'm so glad I got one without having to ask. Girl, yeah. you know your lines. Girl, you know your lines. <laughs> um, and luckily, like I, I I did. They they come back quickly. But it, I don't know. There's it's oh, there's only so much you can do it when it's just you by yourself at your kitchen table and your script. Right. And so on day one of rehearsal. Billy went and did music and I did stage stuff and then we flipped and then it wasn't until the second day that we actually did our scene work together. And it was amazing. It was just like, Jerry was right. I really thought like, oh, we're gonna need more than three days. But we got out there and I was like, all right, you guys just tell me, yell at me if I'm in the wrong spot when I'm supposed to, from when I'm supposed to be, because I, I don't remember that stuff. Right. And I did. Whenever my brain didn't know what to do or what to say or where to go, my body did. Mm -hmm. My body, I just all of a sudden was saying the line as I was supposed to, or my body was moving to whatever number I was supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they weren't long rehearsal days. It was like right. a few hours here and there. And then we dropped in, and it was like, you know, shooting off a rocket. And what about the boots? What about the heels? <laughs> I mean, is it safe to assume you haven't worn heels in four and a half years? It is the truth, yes. Okay, I, safe I to have, assume. I have not. Billy has carried his boots with him on tour, and he's made it part of his act, because he does, he's been touring the country right. and doing his own like solo stuff, yes. but he pulls out and he does some Lola stuff. So he's been, uh, had a little more practice. When I went in for my fitting, they had all of my old costumes. I had kept them in like some sort of sealed packages. They were and they Smithsonian. Were <laughs> they just yeah. got them back from the Smithsonian. <laughs> So there are my boots, and I got to put them on, and man, it was awesome. They fit me so well, because I'd beaten them up and worn them in. And that was three weeks before the rehearsals. So when I came back for the rehearsals, and they presented me with brand new boots they had just made at T.O. Day, I was like, oh no, because they're not worn in, and right. they, they do hurt my feet. Yeah. Now, it took a couple shows, but they're fine now. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back and find out more about Stark Science. Back with Stark Sands, I, I want to talk about Christmas and very specifically Christmas cards. <laughs> Gemma and Griffin, that's, yeah. your, that's your wife and son. That's right. The three of you have been making these spectacular um, Christmas cards and you've shared them on Instagram. Thank you for that. Of course. We did a labyrinth theme with yes, Griffin. And then I saw you had a great comb over. Oh, that was it, the recent, yes, that was this past year. Okay, yeah. And it, you don't have that in real life, so that was, no. there, there was some. Special the, effects. I, I have. I know people in hair and makeup, <laughs> and um, and they are they they are ready at hand uh, at Christmas time. It's pretty spectacular, and and your son is a big part of. It. I mean, he he was acting in the last one. He it was doesn't fantastic. have a choice. Yeah, he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> um, the way it started, my wife Gemma is English, and they don't really do Christmas cards. 
uh-huh. the way that I did and yeah. my, you know, in, I grew up in Dallas, Texas. And so um, a thing that people do is they like go out and like get their family photo taken in the blue bonnets with everybody in jeans and like white button up shirts. Yeah. And it's really cheesy. We did it at Kmart when okay. I was a kid, yeah. Yes, and you do this thing and it's like you're all dressed similarly or maybe whatever. Yeah. She's, we started getting them in 2000. Like, what are these? Yeah, we started getting them in 2009 when we were just dating. And she was like, what is this? And I said, they're Christmas cards. And she thought it was so funny. And I, it, she sort of held up a mirror to me. And I realized like how kind of ridiculous some of them are. Yeah. So we decided to do one where we made a joke out of it. And, um, and, w- and the, the way the English would say, you know, to take the piss, right? Um, <laughs> to poke fun at it. So uh-huh. our first one was 2009. And we, it was just the two of us and our cats. Okay. And we bought really bad Christmas sweaters on eBay, the okay. worst we could find. Okay. And I was doing Bonnie and Clyde in La Jolla at the time. Right. And so we used our hair and makeup people there that they came over to our apartment and they did our hair really crazy and they gave me a fake mustache and we held our cats and we looked, we just wanted to be like the most idiotic, right. bad 1980-ish yes, uh, Christmas course. card. And it worked. We sent it out and it really, it really hit. People <laughs> loved it. <laughs> and then we had this expectation, like, what are you going to do next year? And so we just have been doing it ever since. And it's, you know, the, 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 the labyrinth one. I, bef- when we were, when I knew that we were going to get married and she was going to be my wife, like, I told her, I said, as soon as we have a little kid, boy or girl, mm-hmm. we're doing Labyrinth, one of my favorite <laughs> movies. And I'm going to be David Bowie, I'm going to be Jareth, and yep. you're going to be, you know, the Jennifer hair. Connelly, and we're going to, and our baby will be Toby. And we'll find that red and white striped thing, and then we'll do the Photoshop with everything else. And we did it. And incredibly, like two weeks after that, David Bowie died. Right. And, and so it ended up being a tribute in a yeah. way, like an a unexpected tribute to him. Yeah. So have you thought about this year's? Is it figured yes. out? Oh, it's all figured out. I have a list in my phone of every time we come up with one, I put it into my list. And it's like 50 long now. And some of them are, we'll never do. But some of them, one of them was just like really sunburned people, oh. you know, or like color obsessed. Okay. Where, where we're just like, oh, we love lots of crazy, or like patterns, or, you know, like recreating Saved by the Bell, where, the, where oh. we are every character alternating. <laughs> but then, so Griffin is now like in this, and with, with Photoshop, you can do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, we have a really good idea this year. I can't, I'm not going to tell no, of course any not. of the no, it's no, part of The surprise is it's part of the fun. Yeah. So I want to talk about Dallas. Okay. I want to hear about Dallas. You are a good Texan. Texas boy. Okay. You grew up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how manly was your childhood? What kind of things were you doing out on the land? Well, my dad had a wood shop that was okay. just for him. It was something he loved working with wood and he liked to make duck boxes, like bird houses and things like that. Uh-huh. So me and my brother and my sister would go um, out to the farm. Your twin brother. My twin brother, yeah. Right. Charles um, we would go out there and make stuff. And like, I'm, I still love doing it. I built Griffin a, a playhouse when we moved up, up to Westchester just wow. this summer. And I, I, mean, I went out to the lumber yard and I picked up my wood and I got my blueprints and I like got my tools and I, I banged together a little and house it, for it's him. Standing. It's standing, oh, yeah. it's fine. Oh, it's, wow, it's, that's amazing. It's a good one. So you I, have these skills. It made me feel close to my dad, you know, yeah. to like go back and get out. And I didn't have like a, a, a busy job at the time this summer. So yeah, my, my, I don't know if it was manly. My brother was m- much more like my dad than okay. I was. And so they were like, I mean, I was close with my dad. My brother was more like him. So they would go out and do the outdoorsy stuff. Uh-huh. Um, but I... Uh, yeah, I feel like I, when you say I'm a good Texan, I'm not so sure about that. I feel like I'm kind of a fake Texan sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but do you have any cowboy boots? Yes. Okay, you do. You can't not have cowboy boots. Do you like wear them around the house? I or? only wear them when it's appropriate. Like we, uh, you know, if there's a costume party, to today, today would have been appropriate, by the way. It would have been. I, you're right. Yeah, I would have liked that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a costume party or. I, I'll wear them when I, like, if, if I have an audition or something and I need to look like I'm from. Texas. What makes you walk a certain way? It does, and it just you know I think shoes are very key in like in creating a character. Yeah, it's a big. That's not a secret. It's a uh-huh. it's a sort of a principle that I adhere to. Where if I'm gonna audition for something, I will rehearse for the audition in those shoes that I'm gonna wear to the audition because I need I need to feel okay. a connection uh-huh. to the earth right. through those shoes. Right. And um, yeah, so that's what my boots are for. So when did you start showing this? Uh, hammy side or actor side. I don't want to say hammy, but I heard there's something called Little Miss and Mr. Men, right? Is it that? Little Miss and Mr. Men? What it's are those? so funny you brought that up because today, like before I came out here, um, I left my house and my mom had just sent some of the Little little Mr. and Miss These um, are books. It's a book series. Yeah, okay. it's a little book series that's very basic. It's for kids that are like two to five probably. And 
Um, Little Miss Sunshine is one of them. Mr. Oh, Tackle, right, of course. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Tall, Mr. Plump, yes, Mr. Those everything. Books, yeah. And so um, there was one of those called Mr. Messy that we had the book and the audio tape to. And so my mom would pop in the audio tape and we would act it out. And my brother and my sister are like doing what normal kids do. And they're right. like, my brother's like blah, 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 going like this whenever his character speaks. But when my character, Mr. Neat, talked, I was like lip syncing, word perfect. I knew all the words and, and I was invested. acting it out and I was a little four-year-old and uh, I do think that may have been the first sign. Wow. Did you <laughs> so we'll see. Griffin is, you know, we're going to start reading them to him soon. And okay. We'll see, we'll see if he gets into it. Uh, wow, yeah. This could be a whole new thing. Who knows? How would you feel if he wanted to be an actor? Have you thought of that? I He's have. obviously going to be around it. Before he was born, I sort of thought, you know what, if it's something he wants to do, then yes, but I'm certainly not going to push him into it, mm -hmm. and I don't want him to do it as a little kid, because I've worked with lots of little kid actors, and some of them are very sad, because yeah. they, don't, they think it's what they want to do, yeah. but it's not. However, Griffin came to see Kinky Boots for the first time this weekend, on my birthday. Total surprise. I kissed him goodbye. It was a two-show day. It was a Saturday, my first Saturday in the show, and I gave him a kiss, and I just had a good birthday morning. And I told him, I said, buddy, I gotta go to work, but I'll see you tomorrow morning, and, and I'll see you then. And so little do I know that I go to work, I'm doing the show, Gemma and, and Griffin are driving into the city, I'm doing our final bows, and as we're about to walk off the stage, Billy pokes me and he goes, and I look in the audience, and Gemma has run down the aisle and is holding Griffin right up next to the stage, and, and I just lost it. And I'm, he's looking up like this, just like, oh my God. <gasps> couldn't believe it, because he didn't have any concept of what I did. Right. And, and so, and how could he? Because I hadn't done something like this during his lifetime. Um, but I ran over to him and I gave him a kiss, and then um, I got to play with them in between shows. And we went to dinner together, and he kept asking me, Daddy, you were singing. Daddy, you danced. <laughs> and the best thing happened the next night. Um, we were, I came home from the matinee on Sunday and we uh, were sitting at the kid dinner table and I made it for dinner and we were talking and he said, Daddy, what song were you singing? And I said, I was singing, if you hit the dust, let me raise you up. And I sang the, the yeah. Gemma and I sang the song. Yeah. And, uh, and he looks at me and he goes, raise you up. Raise you up. And he did <laughs> what the angels do in the show. Oh my God, like he, wow. He echoed the, you know, he did, yeah. the, he fit it in. And it was just like blew me away because he hadn't heard it. I haven't been like playing this stuff for him. He yeah. heard it once live. Wow. And then he did it. So it is a catchy song. <laughs> it is. It's true. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. I think that there may be something in there. We'll see. Wow. I'll let him figure it out. Wow. That's so sweet. Yeah. Surprise. A birthday surprise. I it love it. The best. Okay, we're gonna talk more about this when we come back with Stark Sands. are back with Mr. Stark Sands, back on Broadway in Kinky right. Boots. I want to talk more about Texas. So you actually, what I read was that you played the lead in every show at school. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to hear, did that come easy for you? What did you do? What great performances did I miss? All right. When I was a freshman in high school at Highland Park High School, I was new. And so my mom had the idea, like, why don't you take a class with kids from all four grades and her sister worked in the school district and okay. she suggested this theater arts class, tag theater arts, right? Talented and gifted. And I didn't do a lot of theater up until so that you, point. Okay, you hadn't. Okay. No, I'd done, I'd done plays in middle school, but it wasn't like clear that it was what I wanted to do. So I auditioned for the tag theater arts class and I got in and it was freshman, sophomore, junior, seniors. And on the first day of school, we did like theater games where you're like sizzling on the ground like bacon. And it immediately takes away any self-consciousness or like high school, like, Tension. You're mm -hmm. just like being having fun and being a kid. Mm -hmm. So starting then, I did The Sound of Music that first year. Playing. I played Kurt Von Trapp, Kurt, the youngest Kurt, okay. of the Von Trapp. Yes. I'm incorrigible with my line. <laughs> um, but that really was like, oh, I like this. That thing of like, I would had butterflies going on. And then as soon as I stepped into the light, mm -hmm. in front of the audience, it just goes away. And it's stayed like that ever since. I did Guys and Dolls. I did. Um, Playing. Uh, I played Nathan Detroit. Okay, I need okay. the roles. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Nathan Detroit and Guys and Dolls. Okay, good role. Um, uh, a musical, musical called Babes in Arms, where I played Lee Calhoun, okay. the comic relief. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was Romeo in Romeo and Juliet. Oh, yeah, um, these are the leads. I did, though. I was very lucky. It became clear once I was like a sophomore or junior that I was the one who loved it the most. 
and worked the hardest at it. And so it sort of ended up that I was getting a lot of the lead roles and um, I'm very grateful for that. So from there, uh, I went on to uh, the University of Southern California. Right. And um, another great experience, I got into the BFA program and I got my four years of like good conservatory style program under my belt where I played eventually Pippin in Pippin, nice. which, we, which you know uh, with Charles Brown as the leading player. I've wow. been one of my best mm -hmm. friends. Yeah, but that was LA and I, and, and I was, you know, I also like acting, just acting and not doing musical theater. So right. I stayed in Los Angeles and I started working, very luckily working in television and film and did that for the first, you know, 10 years. Yeah. And I knew you uh, from Journey's End, which is an amazing production. Oh my God, that, they're making a movie. They are. They've yeah, there's like it, a yeah. movie, a yeah, movie version so of it coming out. That. Yeah, that was an amazing uh, show and production. A Tony nomination, first of two Tony nominations. Yeah, that was a really incredible, incredible thing. I, I worked and chipped away in movies and TV for years. Yeah, with like big roles in small movies and small roles in big movies and lots mm -hmm. of TV stuff, enough to feel satisfied and to make a living. But it wasn't until Jay Bender saw a movie that I had a small part in called Flags of Our Fathers, a Clint mm. Eastwood film, uh -huh. uh, where I played a young soldier with a lot of other young soldiers, you know. Right. But I, he, I was probably one of many phone calls that he made where he called my agent was like, I'm looking for somebody to play a young, earnest soldier, English soldier, mm -hmm. for this revival of a play and we're having trouble finding the part. Yeah. And so would Stark be interested in flying out to, to New York and auditioning for this? Does he do that? Would he do theater? And of course I was like, Yes, so I flew out and I stayed on my buddy David's couch. I was Pippin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I crashed on a friend's couch and I auditioned for the for the show and and um, after a, a number of callbacks and some pretty challenging um, auditions, I got the job. And then of course that led to, as you said, um, a very lucky nomination. The show won that best revival that yeah. year, two thousand seven, and it put me in a place that film and TV had not done yet. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, I was like a Broadway guy. Right. And. That led to other theater work and and of course American Idiot. Yeah, amazing. I mean, that was a huge. I can't even imagine what it was like to even be on that stage in that world. It was nuts. I, I wasn't in the um, the out of town run at right. Berkeley. I was doing Bonnie and Clyde at the mm -hmm. time in La Jolla, and they had to. They want. They decided they wanted to recast this one part, mm -hmm. and I was somebody who got lucky to go in and audition for it. It happened. So um, the first thing that I did for American Idiot once I got the job was fly to LA to perform on the Grammy Awards with Green Day. Right, right, that's right, yeah. I was like, welcome to the show. <laughs> so um, that was another one that changed my life. And that gave me my first, my first Broadway musical theater credit, which um, led to Kinky Boots. Right. How do you feel about your career? Especially now that I feel like because you've been making a baby and doing other stuff and yeah. making a fort and making all kinds of things, <laughs> yeah. away from this, away from sort of the rhythm of Broadway, you yeah. know, people go from like show to show. Yeah. Has that given you an opportunity to sort of like think about all of this at the same time? Yes. I, it's funny, I left Kinky Boots and the plan was let's, let's start a family. That happened when our son, when my wife was pregnant with Griffin, I got very lucky and was cast in a pilot for a TV show called Minority Report. Yeah, I watched that. Which ended that up was a big show. going to series and being a really big thing. Yeah. Now, we had already put like, you know, I didn't want work to take me away from my personal life. And so I put all these restrictions on the things that I was even open to auditioning for. But when you're, op when you're up for the lead of a Fox, like front and center yes. drama, hour long drama that is based on a Steven Spielberg property that yeah. is like a built in audience kind of thing, you can't not go for that. We, was, every discussion we have as a family. Yeah. So I got that job. Griffin was born, and six weeks later we moved to Vancouver to shoot the show. Wow. So that was the first six months of his life. Wow. That was something that gave me a really great understanding of w the kind of workload you have as the number one on a TV show, on an hour-long drama. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable how much work you do. It's justified, it could be, depending on how successful the show is. Right. If the show's a big hit, you're set. Right. Now you're working really hard, but right. once that job is over, you're like, you can pick and choose. So I'm glad I did it. It was a really great experience. It mm -hmm. lasted one season. It was a beautiful experience. And I was itching to get back to do theater stuff. Once I knew that Kinky Boots was in the pipeline and we had set it up, which was January, February of right. this year, I was like, all right, I can take the rest of the summer to like just spend with my family and hang out with Griffin and Gemma mm -hmm. and like just 
nest, you know. And then I got this crazy phone call from my manager saying, hey, what does your June look like? Because I think you have an offer coming in and I want to make sure that you don't have any conflicts. And I was like, well, I don't know. I, I, I have a family reunion, but it's, if it's a good job, I could miss it. She goes, right. <laughs> it's a good job. I'll call you back. And I was like, okay. So I was talking to Gemma about it and I was like, what do you think it's going to be? Me and Gemma and Griffin are in the car just driving into the city. And we were spitballing like, oh, it'll be, maybe it's a cool indie movie or maybe it's like a, a neat part like for a few <laughs> episodes of like an HBO show or Let's something play cool. Let's a game. Right. Figuring one out my month. Job. What could it be? Right. And, and she called me back and she goes, okay, Steven Spielberg movie. Right. Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep, and you're playing Meryl Streep's son. Oh, you play her son. And I was like, <laughs> yes, blew me away. And I was like, how did this happen? And I didn't even know about this movie. What, what is going on? She so didn't audition for it. No, because of the work that I did and, and being a part of Minority Report, I was on Mr. Spielberg's radar. So Spielberg was watching Minority Report. He was very involved. He, he, oh, he was involved from the yeah, beginning. Begin. Yeah, his name was above the title. He was always like, he was, he, if he was going to put his stamp on something, it okay. was gonna, he, he, he was very much in charge. I never met him, but I know that he um, helped cast me. He chose me. Maybe he just wanted to meet you. So he said, That's you know what? what? I'm going to no, put him in the let's movie. Let's stick him in this movie. <laughs> so I, um, I, got, I got real lucky. You know, he, it, was, it was an idea that he had. That's a crazy thing. That's a right. crazy thing. And that movie, The Post, That's it's right. called, yeah. is coming out now for Christmas. Yeah, December so, 22nd. Yeah, and there you are. And it's Spielberg movie. Nice. So you're set to be in Kinky Boots through? January 7th. January 7th. Nice, nice fall run. Everyone needs to go back and see Kinky Boots. And then The Post will be in movie theaters. That'll yeah. be exciting. When you leave, you'll have a, a big movie in theaters. And it's really cool. I, it's not a big part. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a lot of the movie. You're with Meryl Streep. My scenes, my scenes are, with, are, are with her and, and with Tom and, and many, many others. You know, like that, I only Tom knew Hanks. About Tom Hanks. I just, you just said Tom. I just want to make sure everyone knows who your friends are. You know, are. The, the cast of this movie, all I heard when I was pit when it was when it came to me was Tom and Merrill and Steven Spielberg and like any one of those people makes you go absolutely yes right but then I found out that Bob Odenkirk is in it and Carrie Coon and Tracy Letts and Bradley Whitford yeah and Jesse Mueller yeah. and Jesse Plemons and Zach Wood and all of these like Michael Stuhlbarg these mm -hmm. people that D David Cross these guys that I like um, I adore right that I got to like be on a movie set with yeah. And a lot of it is background stuff because it's like the camera's focusing over here and it's in the newsroom and I'm one of the people in the newsroom. Right. So I'm just at a desk typing. But I'm typing right next to David Cross and, and Bob Odenkirk. And I'm like improving stuff in the background with these right. guys. Dream come true. Yeah, it's awesome. I can't wait to see you up on that screen. Thank you so much, Star, for being here. It's good to see you, everyone. Go check out Kinky Boots again. Or if you haven't seen it, yeah. now is the time to go. Now Hello. is the time. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.